Hello and welcome to the Integrated Rehab and Performance Podcast. My name is Dr. Nick Curtis, running the show here at the Integrated Rehab and Performance Center. Today is a golf podcast, golf podcast episode 13. We are talking about TPIs, balance testing for the golf screen. Now, it's a simple test, um, but it is important. And besides looking at our ability to, or if you think about it, just ability to balance, it's really more about proprioception and mobility. Again, we're looking at can we balance on one foot in the golf swing? We shift weight from one side to the other. We're testing how well do we feel these positions when we're on one side versus the other? What is our proprioception like um, on one side versus the other at the foot, ankle, knee, hip, and in the pelvis and spine even, right? So it is an important test. Yes, balance and being able to balance on one foot is important, but it also tells us more about where is our proprioception at, our ability to sense and feel, and how might that be holding us back when we're trying to, or we we lack the ability to sense certain positions, and how is that kind of acting as a governor on our ability to produce f- power and uh, focus on getting into different positions in the golf swing. So it's uh, there's layers to this single leg balance test. It seems like a simple test, and it is, but there's a lot more that we can take from it from a uh, medical practitioner side where we're getting a lot of information from this test and uh, in the different ways we'd like to break it out even beyond this test to figure out where is the proprioception kind of failing, right? Which joint is it at? So if we take a look at this test, let's kind of dive in here. We can see it's a simple test. We are up on one foot and we just want to know, can we hold this position without this kind of dropping this hip down? We want to keep this knee at 90 degrees. We're going to close our eyes. Can we hold it for about 16 seconds, um, which is what they expect from the pros, right? And so it's just simple. Just holding this position. We want to limit the air planning, so these arms coming out to the side. And we want to limit uh, any foot shift, anything like that will stop the test. Okay, so I had the wrong numbers first, but here we have the amateur uh, numbers. They had 18,768 people that they looked at. And you can see 38% of them didn't make it longer than five seconds on the right side. And then 21% of them couldn't make it longer than five seconds on the left side. Um, in the P- Sorry, uh, on the right side in the PGA. Right, so the number goes way down, but I'd say c- still kind of surprising. And then left side PGA, 16%. Right, and so we're looking to try to get up towards that 16 to 20 seconds, and we're only getting 20% PGA. Let's see here, 12%, 13% on the PGA on the right side. And then, yeah, we're down to 5% and 8% for the amateurs there. So um, we can see there's quite the discrepancy there. And uh, I'd like to see this number bump up in the, in the pros as well. But, um, yeah, again, we're looking at not just can we balance or can we not balance, but what is the proprioception like in our ankles and that's reflected in balance but it's also going to have a play a role in our ability to uh, create power off that leg right so if it's loading into that leg on the backswing or pushing off it into the into the uh, downswing and then accepting that force and our our body's ability to be safe in accepting that force which will limit the brain will limit how much power we can produce when it knows that we, we cannot accept that force at the end right same thing goes for a jump um, it, your brain will limit how high you can jump if it doesn't feel comfortable landing from certain heights. So a lot of times um, when we train the nervous system for things like jumping, it, it might even be more beneficial just to land, right? So we jump off things or we step off heights, building that eccentric kind of control as we land, uh, proprioception, tendons, ligaments, all those things start to adapt. And then when we test, retest the uh, jump, the actual like, counter movement jump, our jump goes up, our ability to create height in the jump goes up, and all we did was practice landing, right? Same thing here. Um, if we can create a, a better ability for our body to understand and accept load, right, and be able to create or understand the mobility that we're getting into when we accept the downswing at the end or are going up into the backswing and we feel comfortable and uh, mobile and we have control over that motion, our body will allow us to produce more force, right? And we don't have to try to produce that force with our muscles, right? And we don't have to think about just trying to swing s- as hard as we can to produce more force. No, it'll become much more natural as our body just kind of unlocks itself to allow that force production to, to be created there. So again, to summarize, this test is telling us a little bit about proprioception. Proprioception will limit how well is our body going to, is it going to allow us to produce a lot of force? Are, do we have mobility in that ankle? Again, proprioception is linked directly to mobility. When we don't uh, understand 
the next range of motion we're trying to get into, well, that's where sometimes neurologically mobility issues prop up. It's because we don't have the proprioception coming from that joint to allow the body to unlock that motion. And then again, that third thing is, do we feel these positions that we're getting into to be able to say, take instructions from a golf pro that's uh, asking us to get into positions, whether it's the ankle, knee, or the hip and pelvis, um, some of that comes back to proprioception. We can test for proprioception with this balanced test, right? And then we can break it out further to decide which joint are we looking at. That's uh, the kind of the problem troublemaker, okay? So there's three important things um, that we can take out of this test and how they relate specifically to golf swings and being able to produce at your highest level. Now, how might we go about uh, fixing some of these issues? Well, first, let's just look at our ability to create range of motion and kind of move through that range of motion, right? So here is a unique kind of dorsiflexion and even some uh, plantar flexion. Oh, there's some loud thunder there, tornado coming in. Um, our ability to bend our knee over our toes and dorsiflex that ankle, right? That angle right there. So what we do, we have our foot off the edge of a little plate here and we want our toes to not have any contact with the ground. Because a lot of times in these drills, people will pull themselves or try to pull themselves with this anterior tibialis muscle, which can just locks up the foot and we lose a lot of range of motion in that foot when we actually do this and we actually limit our dorsiflexion and other motion in the foot when we do that, right? So these toes, we want to think just be hanging off the edge and that we cannot get that cueing by actually hanging them off an edge, right? If we had them fl uh, flat on the floor, they might start to try to curl and connect into that floor. And so this helps us out with that. First thing is just dorsiflexion. So we're just going forward and backward, bending our knee over our toe, starting following the big toe and then into the second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, just getting a little bit of an angle on it each time we do it. Then we can move into some more uh, functional motion, right? Where we're actually bending that knee a little bit further. And again, we are taking, we're kind of unweighting this left leg and putting all our weight in that front leg. And again, working on that dorsiflexion. Now here, we're working a rotational component into it. So we get tibial internal external rotation and we get foot pronation, supination. Um, again, those are just important movements we want at the foot. That's all you kind of really need to know. And we can build that into our dorsiflexion drill here. So we're opening and closing. So now we're just kind of greasing up the ankle and the knee and the hip and learning to move into that position a little bit. And we're taking out some of the comp compensatory motion that happens in a lot of people there with those toes. Now from here, we hopefully created a little bit of motion and uh, we're starting to understand what it feels like to move in these directions. Now we want to really um, build our ability to create power in this range of motion here, right? So let me pause that there. This is a simple drill, this is just a step off. So again, we're getting that same knee flexion, dorsiflexion here, where that knee's coming up over our toes. But I want you to uh, work into this, so we're gonna raise this. The idea there is to get a second plate there, a third plate, a fourth plate. Eventually we're doing it off the edge of a bench, right? Where, where we get almost full knee and hip flexion there into a full deep squat with one leg. But the idea is to go straight down, and the only, only way you're gonna do that and get in that position is if this knee comes forward and we dorsiflex here at the ankle. So now we've created some range of motion here, but now let's create a little bit of stability in that range of motion, right? Let's own that range of motion, let our body, our brain feel comfortable using that range of motion and being strong in that range of motion. And then another way we progress this here at uh, IRPC is we take that another step further and we really start to get the co-contractions. We start building this back into a big functional movement. Okay, in this case, bent to straight knee calf raise. So my heel there is floating off the ground and then I extend this knee, I extend this hip, I extend this ankle, and then I flex this knee, I flex this hip, and I flex this ankle as I create this kind of power position here. Again, I sink back into that. This heel stays floating off the ground. Uh, knee is over the toe, right? So I'm working on dorsiflexion here. I, I have a little bit of twist in the spine and the hips there. Again, that's just a, to milk that range of motion a little bit and work that into it. Again, golf area rotary. So just work in the pelvis and hips a little bit in rotation. And then again, we explode up through here. We're getting co-contractions around the knee, the hip, the ankle, calf, and then we work into this hip flexion, hip flexor here as well, right? So we are we're emphasizing a reconnection. We worked on just ankle mobility at first, ankle and foot, and then we worked into kind of stabilizing through that a little bit. And now the last thing is we are using that in conjunction with a bunch of other muscles into a functional motion that we will use on the field, the court, and definitely the golf course, right? So we're getting that new range of motion to work at the same time as we're working on our other ranges of motion 
co-contraction of all these muscles, right? So building it back into that big pattern, that's always the end goal. And where a lot of people fall short is they don't rebuild that back into the big patterns that we actually use in sport. And that's what this last drill, uh, one of many drills that we can use to kind of start putting everything back together a little bit. Right, so I'm cueing kind of top of the foot towards the wall there. Here's it from the back. I'm getting a little bit of excessive rotation. That's totally fine to get a little bit more glute stretch. And again, here we get that glute to extend the hip at the same time as we're getting the, the calf to plantar flex that foot. And here we're kind of eccentrically, load, eccentrically loading this whole right leg and pelvis and even getting some spine rotation through there. So we're really building into that range of motion again while getting a ton of proprioception and information from there. And then we tell the body, hey, use this in a big functional motion, motion and, and uh, movement, and this is how we do it, right? And then we train it, and we just train it. All right, and so that is the single leg balance test. Again, a lot of important implications when we shift our weight onto one leg in the golf swing and then the other is what is this telling us about our proprioception, our ability to sense our position in space and our mobility, right? And so once we work on those, we want to integrate everything, and that's what those three drill progressions were kind of showing you there. All right, so thanks for tuning in. This is the single leg balance drill and from TPI, Titleist Performance Institute, and a couple of ways that we like to uh, work on it for our patients and clients that are limited in, our, in their ability to do that. Uh, all right, thanks for tuning in.